So the holiday deals have already started this year and with the Black Friday price guarantee that a lot of stores are offering like Best Buy and Newegg, I figured we'd go ahead and get ahead of some of the sales and just start putting things in our mind of what to look for, um, things that you may want to have or things that I want to have, just a general mix of all sorts of home lab related um, tech. So we're going to start off basically just looking at um, a couple of devices. The first one being a, a cache drive for like your Unraid server, um, maybe even TrueNAS, FreeNAS, or maybe a fast NVMe cache for things like Proxmox, things like that. Um, I've been really happy with the SK Hynix Gold P31. I've actually bought two of these as you can see here. So it's been a great buy. Now the price on this I've seen as low as $100 um, ten dollars so right now it's a hundred and thirty this price will hopefully go down it has been going down um, so keep that in mind it is a little expensive right now now if for some reason this is too expensive for you another great alternative is the crucial p2 one terabyte it is a little slower but it still benchmarks really well a lot of people tout um, about its quality online I've actually bought one of these for my wife's gaming computer and it's been an absolute charm and it's currently only $83. Not sure if that's expensive or not. Um, I, I know that price has definitely gone down, but this is definitely a contender to keep your eye on. You get a couple of these in your motherboard and you got some fast cash. Now, also from Crucial, we have the P5. So this is their newer one terabyte version. This one's currently cheaper than the SK Hynix P31. Uh, also a great candidate. I've seen a lot of people rave about this one. I personally don't have no experience with this drive. I was going to buy it, but it, I was fortunate enough to come across the gold P31 first, and I didn't get this drive. So um, the Crucial P5 is one to keep on. And remember, you don't need NVMe, especially for Unraid, um, to have like fast transfer speeds. You can get standard SSDs, you know, two of those in a RAID 0, four of those in a RAID 10. Uh, and that's going to perform really well. And you can really just pick up any SSD to get like near gigabit uh, transfer speeds, like somewhere in between the neighborhood of 800 to 900 megabits per second, um, depending on the SSD you get. If you stick to something like Samsung, you should do um, perfectly fine. Or maybe like a Crucial MX500 if, if those are even still for sale. Of course, you know, always keep a lookout for used enterprise gear, but if you have to have brand new stuff like I kind of do, then this is this is what we're looking at. Now, if your motherboard supports something called bifurcation, you can buy four of those NVMe drives and basically stick them in an adapter like this, and you can do a RAID 10 with NVMe cache, and this thing is sweet. So I have one of these, and I've basically had it since it came out, and it used to be over a hundred dollars I believe and it has been one of the best purchases for my home lab I've had today. Now, this is the V2 version I have the V0 I believe I think they even have a V1 out there somewhere so I have the oldest version and it still works with uh, Intel VROC systems um, but that's something to keep in mind because I know a lot of uh, Intel systems tend to try and lock down NVMe now or give you um, RAID ability only with this VROC techn technology or specific motherboard uh, technologies to unlock the RAID um, compatibility layer. So keep that in mind um, when you're out there looking. Um, I think this is a great card. I would buy this if I was looking at one today. Um, also, for those of you that are very fortunate, they have a PCI 4.0 version. If, you know, for you data hoarders out there that are just like, storing extreme amounts of ISOs, uh, this would probably be really cool for you. I have no idea if you'd actually be able to even use the full power of this thing. Um, and oh, by the way, when I mentioned RAID earlier, RAID 10s, I was talking about a software RAID 10, not hardware RAID 10. So you could still do software RAID 10s and unraid without VROC technology or VROC enabled motherboard. Uh, keep that one in mind <laughs> as you as you're like out there shopping for NVMe. Now, if your motherboard's really old, uh, an enterprise motherboard that doesn't have onboard N NV NVMe drives or M.2 um, ports, actually not NVMe drives, M.2 ports, uh, and it doesn't support bifurcation. Um, I've been a big fan of this. I use one of these all the time for my cache testing with Unraid. 
Um, it's been an absolute charm. It comes, it's basically keyed for all sorts of slots. And with servers, you can get all sorts of different kind of lanes that are like different sizes, everything from 1.0, 2, 4, whatever, uh, full slots. So having something like this that is very compatible with a bunch of different slots is awesome. And you don't actually need all of the lanes anyway um, to get the full bandwidth out of your M.2 uh, NVMe drive. So these are, these are great to have, I highly recommend. Uh, if you're looking to add just a little bit extra storage for your uh, your dry or <laughs> your operating system for virtual machines or even cache of that nature. Now, speaking of storage, um, I recently made a video about Western Digital's Easy Store drives. These things go on sale all of the time. Uh, I would definitely keep an eye on these at Best Buy, most likely. B and H Photo has the these as well, the Easy Stores and Elements. They have really sweet drives in them and they are CMR drives, at least in the easy store anyway, which is, I guess, important to a lot of people. Um, obviously, the the Western Digital 14 terabyte version went on sale recently for $199, which is a steal as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they also have 12, well, they have everything from basically 10 uh, to, six, to 16 or 18, maybe even up to 18. Uh, but definitely keep an eye on these if you're looking to add some additional storage test them out to make sure they're okay before you remove the hard drives from the enclosure or shuck them. That's something important to keep in mind. Um, so I would, 10 out of 10 would recommend buying one of these if you're looking to add storage for your like NVR um, to your data array or maybe even just a local backup on your gaming computer, whatever it may be, great choice. Now, what about server chassis? So. Server chassis are kind of crazy. The the Rosewell, the ever famous Rosewell server chassis that everybody is looking for, I'm pretty sure that's gone. So that is the RSVL4412, which is this one here. This is literally the fabled, impossible to find a server chassis. But Rosewell has released a newer version of it that is also hot swappable, and this is the um, RSVL4412U. So this one looks pretty much identical as I, as far as I can tell. Um, it has newer hot swap drive bays, as you can see here kind of in the front, and also supports USB 3.0, which is nice to see. Uh, the old version's only two, and honestly it had some like weird plug that you couldn't even plug into any motherboard anyway, so it's basically useless. Um, I think this one will probably go on sale, especially for Black Friday or even Cyber Monday. Definitely keep an eye on this if you're looking for a server chassis uh, to move away from like a uh, traditional tower or something like that. This would be potentially a great purchase, very versatile um, chassis, at least if it, the, the previous versions anything to go off, this one should be a pretty uh, versatile chassis. Now for CPUs, if you're looking to build a high-speed game server host, uh, Ryzen's definitely the way to go. I think Ryzen's gonna get really cheap especially now that Intel's released their newest Alder Lake platform. You could pick up a 5600X right now for 300 bucks, um, but I would definitely keep an eye on the 5800X because that one will probably go down to $300 maybe during Black Friday. Definitely one that I would keep my eye on. Uh, definitely be careful with a 5700G or the 5600Gs, basically the ones with onboard APUs. Uh, because Ryzen has limited PCIe lanes, and if you get one of the Ryzen um, APUs, you'll actually lose four lanes, uh, or maybe whatever, you'll lose some lanes, so keep that in mind, but you will be getting an onboard APU, which is nice, or onboard graphics, I should say, uh, which is nice. Um, so definitely keep your eye on Ryzen. I think that's gonna be a great contender uh, moving forward. And let's talk about something else to keep an eye on that I think a lot of people tend to pass up, especially in the holidays, and that is battery backups. So I've been a big fan of Eaton uh, battery backups basically since I've moved away from cyber power. If, you're look if you have a network rack that you're looking to just keep you know, powered up uh, during a brownout or blackout, whatever it is, for a short period of time, or even maybe a slightly extended period of time, uh, we have the Eaton 5P 550R. Uh, I would say this is a pretty competitive price at 380 or three, yeah, $380. It is pure sine wave, which is awesome. 
Um, these tend to be a lot more expensive, but I would definitely keep an eye on this. This specific model doesn't come with any ethernet based management system, so that way your system's known to shut down when the battery's getting low. You will have to buy that add-on card in this case. If you have a lot more room in your server rack, there's also the 2U uh, 5P. I think this is a pretty good deal. It's a little expensive, especially when you consider the fact that it doesn't even come with the network management port. Um, and this one is also not expandable. Uh, and what I mean by that is you can buy battery packs and then extend the life of this battery if it had a battery pack. Now, my preferred Eaton UPS is the 5PX1500RT. Um, this one is the bee's knees. And as you can see, um, it's a lot more expensive uh, with all of the additional uh, network kits and all that stuff. So it's 1300 bucks. Now, I think I got mine for about six, 600 to six to $700 when I last talked about it, I don't remember, but here's one that may be fully loaded out. Yep, uh, for only $760. Uh, and this one does come with the extendable battery backup. So that's, or the port um, to add an external uh, battery so you can increase the life. And I think you can daisy change those too. So you can actually add like two or three batteries to this one UPS extending the life of just this one, which is pretty neat. And you know, let's say you do decide to buy the one U1 and you find that it only has um, like four ports and that's not enough for you. Um, something great to have is a PDU. So you don't want a surge protector. Um, you want something that is literally just a power extension unit, I guess. So a PDU, a power distribution unit, is what you're looking for. Um, it doesn't tamper with the power at all, making it safe for you to plug into the UPS and then getting you additional ports. I have a cyber power one. Uh, cyber power is good, trip light's good, AC Infinity is good, and I'm sure there's other brands that I'm not thinking of that are good, but definitely a PDU. Um, without surge protection is what you are looking for if you want to add additional ports to your UPS if it doesn't have enough um, outlets for your setup. And that could be important because, you know, a lot of those outlets get blocked by these like routers that I don't have or even modems or gateways because they put the power brick right on the um, actual outlet, which is really dumb. Um, of course, you could always just get little mini uh, like one meter um, NEMA 15R or 14R or whatever. You can get basically small extension cables if you really wanted to, to get around things like that. But uh, PDU is always great. Uh, if you're building your own network rack for the first time, um, you know, get a Keystone patch panel so that way you can uh, change these out more easily if you decide to rearrange where those actual uh, plugs are. That's something I wish I would have done. I'm thinking about making a video in the future where I actually switch out a traditional um, panel or pat, yeah, patch panel with a keystone patch panel. Uh, I'd be looking at this TrendNet one here or Cables Matters. I don't think it really matters, <laughs> but I would definitely uh, look at this Cable Matters one or even this uh, TrendNet one. I think those would be uh, good purchases for my network rack moving forward. And of course, uh, we have like various rack accessories. Um, a good shelf is always good for non-standard rack mount stuff. Like in my case, I have a bunch of TP-Link networking hardware that uh, is not rack mountable without some sort of like a special adapter. So, you know, you can pick up a shelf and that will house the uh, E605 router, ER605 router, a switch, and even the OC200 or 300 cloud controller. Um, that can all fit on one of these shelves. and um, they're fairly expensive for what they are, but this is like a, you know, you buy it for life kind of product. So it kind of makes sense why they're so pricey. Um, continuing on with that kind of mentality, uh, we have lots of racks that I hope go on sale. StarTech is a good brand. I would definitely keep an eye on a server rack with casters if you don't plan on wall mounting your server rack or whatever. They even have like 6U ones that you can mount directly to the wall. Uh, Trip Light's a great brand. Um, I haven't bought any of these generic ones listed here on Amazon. Can't go wrong with Navepoint. 
and also keep in mind AC Infinity. They also have server racks, even though those are marketed more for audiovisual equipment, but they are standard 19-inch uh, width anyway. So that's definitely nice to have. Uh, finally, how about some networking tools? So I'm a big fan of client tools, specifically this wire crimper, cutter, and stripper. So this one allows you, if you buy the modular uh, network boot uh, like this, you can pass through the cable or pass through the wires, not the cable. And then when you go to crimp your cable, it actually just cuts off each one of the little um, wires that are in there. Uh, so that way you get a nice clean cut. And also when you go to insert the boot into a port, it has much better connectivity because there's no like leftover uh, pieces. So it'll look like this when you're going to cut it through or do the pass through. Each little, each of the wires has its own little hole that it fits through. Absolutely love this tool. Um, I actually have it right there. Uh, the one on the right's pretty okay, but it's not nearly as good as the one that does basically everything. Also, I did buy the Klein Tools pass through modular plug. Um, you don't have to buy these. There are are other brands that offer uh, pass-through RJ45 uh, boots. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you are shopping around. Uh, actually, here are the ones that I bought right here, this 50 pack. Oh, they actually have a little bundle, it looks like. That's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so keep that in mind as you're thinking about buying network um, <laughs> tools to help you run those network cables. And then of course, if you're looking maybe just for some rack accessories, um, AC Infinity has tons of accessories and rack equipment as well as like rack or I should say closet cooling or very specific cooling um, type products. Um, they have these pretty neat little panels here that will basically you can hide those empty spaces on your rack or maybe you want a ventilated one. They also have shelves, they have drawers of different sizes which is really cool so if you want to put as much uh, if you want to, if you have a lot of space on your rack, not sure what to do with it, well, you can add some storage to it, which is really cool. Always thought about buying one of these, but now I've filled up my rack, so I guess I'll never do that. But storage is really cool, I think. They also sell shelves, and there's a whole boatload of other products, including um, nuts and bolts. I haven't ever used AC Infinities. I would imagine it's a decent, they're decent uh, nuts and bolts or screws, sorry. Um, so this would probably be a good purchase here. Um, I believe they have 6M or 6 whatever as well. Uh, M6, that's what I'm looking for, M6. Uh, cages and screw, or cages, wow. Nuts and screws, so yeah. That's pretty much all the things that I would kind of keep an eye on. Um, I myself am looking at getting some more of the gold P31s. And if, of course, if you're unsure about the prices and whether now is like a good time to buy, um, there's tools like Honey. I would not use Honey because I think that only gives you 30 days of previous uh, pricing history. I would instead use camelcamelcamel.com. And so basically you can get an idea of the prices of things. Now this specifically applies to Amazon, but you can still see the pricing history. So even if you are at like B&H Photo or Best Buy or Newegg, you can still use this tool to be like, hey, is new egg sale a good good deal? Because we can look at the entire lifetime price history of a product. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the URL of that crucial P2 into here. And here in the date range, you can see that it's set to all. And so the all time low that they've ever seen that camelcamelcamel.com has ever seen has been $83.99. Um, they also tell you the highest price, lowest, and then average price, which is really nice. And they is, even have some data here for third parties, uh, which is really cool. So, you know, we know for a fact that right now this Crucial P2 one terabyte NVMe drive is in fact a good deal. Um, it, the price could definitely go down during Black Friday, but if you need something today, um, this would be so, something you could probably pick up and not feel too bad about especially at competitors like Best Buy or Newegg who have price protection or price buyback protection or whatever it's called. So definitely check out camelcamelcamel.com. Uh, they're a great site to use or to find the lifetime price of products versus something like Honey. All right, well, I hope you guys found this somewhat helpful. And of course, there'll be links in the video description for all of this stuff below if you wanna help uh, support the channel, which I, of course, would appreciate very much. 
And with all that being said, uh, hopefully we'll get to some Home Lab content soon, and I will see you all next time. Peace.